Hey guys, welcome back. In the previous video, we saw how to create a workflow file using GitHub Actions. So we created a test to test uh, workflow file. Basically what it does is, every time we create a pull request, it triggers this build job. Um, and you know, it can tell us like if there are any breaking changes present in our pull request or not. The only problem is at this moment, if this build check is green or if the build check is red, it will not prevent your PR from getting merged into main. When you're working with multiple people in the team, what you really want is if there are any breaking changes present in your pull request, you do not want them to merge with your main branch, right? And in this video, we will see how we can uh, how we can make it as a quality gate so that you know if there are any breaking changes in the in the pull request, it will not be allowed to get merged into the main branch. Let's see how to get it done. So you have to click on settings, then you have to click on branches. Then you have to click on the branch where you want to create this protection rule. So in this case, main branch, let's click on edit. Let's go to the section requires status checks to pass before merging. And what you have to do is you have to give the name of this build, like name of this job. In the past, I've done this mistake that, you know, I try to give the name of the file. Sometimes I have to give the name of this workflow, but that, that will not work. So for example, if I try to give here test the tester you will see you're not getting any suggestions and that means this is incorrect if you try to give java ci that will also not be accepted so basically this is the name of this job which is build which you can also see here and if you try to give build now you can see that it's giving a suggestion so if you click on build now it's it's selected and now if I click on save, basically this will make it as a blocking condition for a pull request to be merged. So if build is green, you'll be allowed to merge your pull request. If it is not green, you'll not be allowed to merge your pull request. So let's save the changes. Changes are saved. And now let's create a condition where the build will fail, right? So let's go to our project zero. And in this case, what we will do is we will create Two kind of test which will uh, which will make our build fail so for example you can either have failing test cases so imagine uh, you know there's, there's a bug in the application because of which the tests are failing or maybe you know that there is a migration which is going on which will make your test failing so maybe you want to mark them as failed test cases right so let's convert this passing test into a failing test cases so let's assert equal day as night and now you know that this test case will fail, right? So let's also tag it as a failing test cases. Why am I tagging this? I'll explain you like in a very short time. So now we have a failing test case. And if we try to run our test again, our test will start failing in CI. Maybe let's also create another situation which we know results into you know a failing build. And that is having a flaky test case. So let's create a flaky test case. So let's say void create a flaky test case. Now we all would have encountered flaky test cases, especially when you're working with a UI or a mobile application. What is a flaky test case? A flaky test case is something that depending on what time of day you run, you know, it, it might either pass or it might fail. Uh, so let's use in fact even time to create a flaky test case. So let's uh, let's capture the time. Maybe I would call it current timestamp and let's system current time in milliseconds and let's print this timestamp, right? Normally I like to use a logging library, but at this moment, since we have not introduced a logging library yet, so let's just print it using system out print line and let's just print this current timestamp. And maybe let me put a to do note uh, to do, and I would say uh, remove this line with a um, logging statement, right? And maybe this could be a topic for our next video, but for now we know that this is not how we want it to be, but for now it is okay. And what I will do is I would say if current time stamp percentage two is zero then I would say uh, let's copy this line 
and let's call it as uh, true and we can say time is even if not we can say assert true false and we can say time is odd and, and let me format this code control alt l so now the code is formatted and now you can see like depending on if the current timestamp is ending with an even number or if it is ending with an odd number this test case will sometime pass and will sometime fail so what we have done is we have created a flaky test case right so let me also tag it as a flaky test case let's open visual studio code and now you can see we have uh, changed our passing test case into failing test case and now we have a flaky test case so let's just add this and in fact before this yep so i am on the main branch so let's create a new branch get checkout branch and let's call it as let's call it as add uh, failing and flaky test cases right get branch so now we're in this branch and i would say added flaky test cases okay uh, let's push this code so let's push this code to github and let's create a pull request so i'll click on this and let's create a pull request and in this case if you remember in the last time when it was running the build check there was nothing that was stopping the pull request from getting merged but this time you can see it says required status must pass before merging so we do have a status check here and if I click on this, last time we had two test cases, but now we have three test cases. And let's see when the build with maven step starts. We expect at least one test case to fail, the one that we have marked is failing. And the flaky test case, depending on the timestamp, it may pass or it may fail. So let's see here, go here. And as we can see, we have run three test cases two fail so one is what you are expecting to fail uh, so for example uh, assert that a day is a day so this one failed and the second one was creating a flaky test case so if we go back to our branch you go to the pull request you can see even if you now want to merge this pull request you cannot merge this pull request right because you have a pull request which contains either failing or flaky test cases so what we want to do is, um, and since failing tests and flaky tests are going to be part of our life, no matter how hard we try, sometimes there would be a bug in the applications because of which you will have failing test cases and you do not then, you know, want to continue running those test cases until the bug is fixed. Also flaky test cases are a part of life. So sometimes you can make some test cases stable. Sometimes you cannot make some test cases stable. And what you really want is when you want to make these test cases as a part of continuous integration run, you do not want this flaky test to run as a part of continuous integration pipeline. And you want to basically then skip these test cases until you make them more robust. And the way you can implement this is uh, if I, let's first in fact click on enable auto merge, squash and merge. And what it means is once we fix all our test cases, it will automatically merge our pull request. So the way you can actually fix it is you can go to actions and let's say if you go to java ci with maven uh, let's click on this and let's click on the build and let's click on view workflow file and what you really want to do is now you want to skip this failing and flaky test cases the way you can do it is very easy at this moment we have this command maven build package file pom xml you can either keep it or you can change it to maven clean test does not matter but what we really want to change is if i click on add it you basically want to exclude any so you want to exclude so excluded groups and what you want is you want to exclude your flaky test cases or you want to exclude your 
failing test cases, right? And let me see if these are indeed the tags, flaky and failing. Yep. So these are indeed the tags that I've provided. So now let's create a commit. It says commit directly to the branch or create a new branch. So we can in fact commit directly to the branch and let's commit the changes. And now this should trigger the test again. So as you can see, the build check is triggered again. And now if we go back to the details, this time it should skip both the, uh, both the failing and flaky tests and the build should then succeed and it should then automatically, you know, merge into, uh, uh, into our main branch. So let's wait for a few minutes, a few seconds, build a screen. If you go to build with Maven, you can see only one test case is run. It skipped the flaky test case, it skipped the failing test case, which is exactly what you would want to do when you're working in a real life project, right? So not only we learn how to, uh, not only we learn how to make it, how to make this build check as a mandatory condition to be clear, but we also saw some practical use cases that when you're working in a project and you know, you want to skip flaky and failing test cases, how you can do it. Um, so with this, I think you are ready to create new test cases. And whenever, whenever you have a failing test case because you have a bug in the application or you find a test case is not stable, you can mark it as flaky. In some cases, you might even have broken test cases. So you can mark them as broken. And all you have to do is like flaky or failing or broken. And you can skip those test cases and only run the ones which are, which are good, right? Um, so with this, I think uh, we can conclude this, this particular topic and then we can go to the next topic, which, were, which I marked here. So basically at this moment, I was giving a system out print line. A system out print lines are basically, you cannot ignore them if you want to ignore them. And there are certain use cases where it makes sense to have a logging a framework in place where you know, sometimes you want to throw some errors, sometimes you want to throw some warnings, sometimes you want to give some information, and sometimes you just want to have some debug statements. And that is a topic for itself. And that is something, you know, which you can probably cover in the next video. So I hope you learned something useful in this video. Uh, if you like this video, well, press, a, pre press the like button. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it. And I look forward to see you guys in another video. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.